As a scientist or researcher, just how extraordinary do you need to be for an EB1A? And more important, how do you convince USCIS? How do you convince an adjudicator who failed chemistry? Let's break down the EB1A extraordinary ability analysis with you, scientists and researchers in mind. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Stefan Akpoli and I'm here to do for you what so many people have done for me over the years, and that is to provide important information that could maybe change a life or two. Now, this video about the EB1A, it just started, but if you feel like you're already losing a little bit of your soul, or simply want someone else to handle your EB1A case, or have a unique situation, or just want to move speedily, my contact information is in the description. What is the EB1A? Here's the gist. EB1A, you, top of your field, prove it, continue to work in your field. Not permanent residence on approval of the petition only, but a fast track to get you there. If your history is clean, no employer needed. That was too short for you, don't worry, I'll ramble later. USCIS measures extraordinary ability with a checklist in part, in the first part of its analysis. Unless you have some one-time achievement, some great one-time achievement like a Nobel Prize, USCIS presents 10 criteria, three of which you have to satisfy. These are the criteria. For scientists and researchers, three out of 10 is quite easy, well, relative to how it is for people in other fields. What I'm saying is that a large chunk of scientists and researchers can easily satisfy at least three out of 10. Here's how scientists and researchers can typically do that. Articles, contributions, judging, among others. Now I say among others because for many scientists, others will be easily satisfiable. While most criteria are much more rigorous and detailed and nuanced than they appear at first glance. It's common for scientists or researchers with a lawyer like me to be able to satisfy many of the criteria, including this one, this one, this one, and this one. In part two of the EB1A Extraordinary Ability Analysis, USCIS decides if you are really that good. Here you must show that you are among the small percentage at the top of your field, and you must show sustained national or international acclaim. To show these things, you'd be wise to apply certain factors. Applying factors, your argument to establish that you are at the top of your field might go something like this summarized. The evidence shows that I've authored a significant number of articles that have been published in top journals. The evidence shows thousands of citations to my published work. It shows the rate at which my articles have been cited is extremely high for my field. The evidence shows that several of my articles have been highly influential. And overall, the number of research articles I've authored and their unusually high citation rate are commensurate with me being at the top of the field. With an argument, like the one I just summarized, you'd be applying factors that USCIS weighs. Weighs in the context of evaluating if you are at the top of your field. Here you apply the scholarly article's authorship factor. You apply the distinguished journal publication factor the lead authorship factor, the high citation count factor, among some others. There are many more factors relevant to whether you are at the top of your field as a scientist or researcher, and whether you have sustained national or international acclaim, including factors related to employment or research experience at leading institutions in your field, unsolicited invitations to speak or present research, patents, existing significant applications of your work, possible future applications of your work, research funding, media coverage, requests to review manuscripts for renowned publications, and so on. To establish national or international acclaim, you apply factors like the ones we've just talked about. For example, another researcher might argue something like this, a summary. The evidence shows that I've received media coverage, patents, continuous research funding, and significant attention from other experts in the field that is reflected in the citations to my work, as well as frequent invitations to present my work at national or international conferences, including conferences in the United States and in Brazil and throughout Europe. In addition, I've received and completed requests to review a substantial number of manuscripts for renowned international professional publications. These are indications of the sustained national or international acclaim that I have received for my contributions to the field. In that argument, the sustained aspect of the acclaim is argued through references to dates. You may have noticed the reference to continuous research funding, for example. The international aspect of the acclaim is argued through references to locations. You might have noticed the references to the United States, to Brazil, and to Europe. Ultimately, it's the cumulative weight of the evidence across multiple factors that will compellingly show that you are at the top of your field and have sustained national or international acclaim. 
You likely still have questions. How do you put everything together? Questions. What reference letters do you need? In fact, you might be full of questions. How do you know you've shown enough to establish the position shown at the top to of the field? National or international exactly. claim. Exactly. Documentary evidence in a way that does not make you spiral into an existential crisis. How do you tie all this? How do you package that? How do you do it? That's where a skilled lawyer comes in. And at my firm, we help scientists and researchers throughout the entire process, building strong cases for them. You're staring at a blank Word document when you're working on your EB1A case, or you have a unique situation, or you're aiming for a swift process, or you're simply seeking expert legal guidance throughout the entire process, write to me. Contact information is in the description. And now go subscribe. More videos like this are on the way.